All right. Good morning. Huh? I thought we we're going to get an intro or something. <laughs> no, I just popped in. It's, it's, it's on. Okay. How are you doing, Grimmer? I'm doing fine. How are you, Nelson? I'm doing well. Had a chill weekend, and I see a lot of people in the live chat saying good morning, good evening. Oh, yeah. Good evening. Or yes, good it's afternoon. good to everything everywhere. Yeah. Good. What? Well, what is time? Time and space, the fabric. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a loaded question, Nelson. That's too early for me to think about it even. <laughs> too early for us, but uh, maybe just in time for other places in the world. But hello, everyone. Uh, part of the ADP list. My name is Nelson Abos Jr. I am a senior product evangelist over here at Webflow. Um, my experience with Webflow, I've been playing around with it since uh, the super early days, 2013, um, when it was in closed beta. And I've just been a just been a super fan of it, uh, even back then when it was just called a landing page builder. You could only pay, uh, make one page with it. You couldn't add custom code. You couldn't add, um, you couldn't do much with it. But for some reason, it just felt like the future of web design. And I just stuck with it. And here we are today. It is, I guess, now the present of <laughs> web design. Well, if you watch, yeah, of web design, I, was, I, was, I thought you were talking about this video, but it is yeah. presently now. But if someone is watching it later, it's not. So, uh, anyways, Nelson, we're... keep on going. I, I am just disturbing you here. Keep going. What again? What is time? We're going. Okay, we're going in a loop. <laughs> anyways, uh, yes. So, what are we doing today? We're going to be learning about CMS and Webflow collections and how does that play into Webflow and how you can make a dynamic website. Now, before we get into what all that means, uh, have a little have a little icebreaker for you, a little activity for everyone in the live chat. All right, so um, there's this little uh, uh, game I used to play when I was a kid. It was called Mad Libs and it was really fun because uh, if you're not familiar with Mad Libs, you would just supply the storyteller with different adjectives, nouns, uh, and verbs, and they, and then the storyteller would put those words into the story, and then the actual story would probably not make sense, but it's kind of funny. So this might be funny. This is not, not might not be funny, but hey, you know what? Let's let's try it anyway. So I'm gonna share my screen, and we're gonna try this Mad Libs thing. All right, so um, get my screen up. There we go. All right, so these are all the words. Let me, let me zoom in here. These are all the words I need from you, the, the live chat, all right? And we're going to stick them into this story. But we're not going to read that story, so there's just a little teaser right there. All right, so let's get some. Go ahead and post it in chat. Um, uh, give me an adjective. I'll start with you, Grimmer. Give me an adjective. Just All right, any I'll random start. adjective. Okay. Mm, clumsy. Clumsy. And I... Yeah. I, I'm oh, wow, clumsily... that's good spelling. <laughs> Stop it. All right. I I, all right. I need a noun. I need a noun. Okay, so I need a noun chat. Bunny. Got it. I see bunny. All right, adjective. Adjective. We got... Okay, I'm looking here. Lifeless. I'm just taking the first word I see. And next, we need a noun. That's a place. All right. So, uh, corner of the bedroom. All right. Adjective. We're going to just keep going down. We're all... Adjective. Giggly. Okay, another adjective. Dark. Plural noun. So, I need a vehicle this time. I need a vehicle. All right. Scooters. Yes. All right. Are we talking like other electric scooters? Okay. Uh, adjective. We need an adjective. Uh, slow. Another adjective. I see happy. A plural noun. Plural noun. So this is a uh, butterflies. Okay. I need an adjective. Here we go. Creepy. I really want to know where this story's going. All right. Plural noun again. Here we go, plural noun. Books, okay. Uh, jets for another plural noun. Adjective, graceful. Uh, I need a noun. Tree. <laughs> okay, I'll give you this one, uh, Grimmer. Go ahead, verb. 
blurb. Um, mm-hmm. An action word. Huh? An? No. No, it's an action word. An action word. Um, let me see. Doing something. Uh, do, 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 do. Doing, or was that like... Okay, I see dancing. Dancing. <laughs> All right. All right, adjective, tacky. Okay, another verb. Okay, take this one, Grimmer. I think we should pick something from the okay. chat here. I am like... I see fighting, plural noun. I see aliens. Okay, all right. Plural noun, type of job. Okay, would this be video producer? <laughs> video producers? I could have said that. Let's do that. Okay, adjective. Any other adjective? Dynamic. Okay. A verb. I see throw. Th- okay. And lastly, one more adjective. I see fishy. <laughs> okay. So in this Mad Libs, in the little game, you would take these and put them into the story. So here's our story. I'll put my, I'll put the words in the other, in another window so I can read it. But here we go. Let's read it all together. Star Wars is a crazy bunny of lifeless versus evil in a corner of the bedroom, far, far away. There are giggly battles between dark scooters in slow space okay yeah and happy duels with butterflies called creepy savers books called andrew called droids are helpers and jets to the hero to the heroes a graceful power called the tree dancing. Oh, I think we did that wrong. The tree dances. Okay, the, the tree dances people to do tacky things like fighting aliens. Oh, to do things like fighting aliens. Hey, that one works. The Jedi. The Jedi video producers. Ooh. <laughs> That's you. Ooh. Is that the, a callback or what? <laughs> How cool. The the Jedi video producers use the force for the dynamic side. Ooh, I like that. The dynamic side and the Sith fishy. Oh no, and the and the Sith throw throw it throws it for the fishy side. So we have the dynamic side and the fishy side. And that is our story. That's really good. How awesome. The video producer, the Jedi video producers. If you haven't seen um, any of Grimmer's uh, micro lessons, please look that up on YouTube. Do like a web flow, uh, search on YouTube, web flow micro lessons. And you'll see him. He actually does have force powers. So it's just, oh, how beautiful how beautiful so awesome that was fun and um yeah so basically what we did is kind of like what we're going to be doing today so when i was asking for adjectives now when i was asking for these words that's just like me collecting data okay so i'm collecting data and putting it into this table and then when a storyteller or user wants to place that data into a story, that's like making a dynamic page. You can think of it like a blog post page where you have a template for a blog post, but everything is blank. And it's not until you put that data into, or those data into the blog post template is when you actually see the story come to life. And that is what we're going to be building something. Yeah. That, that's the concept that we're going to be building on today. 
All right. So um, what it, so we're going to start with a Webflow collection. So a Webflow collection, again, is a collection of data. You may have heard the, uh, you, you may have heard the, the term database, and it may be kind of scary for designers. I know it was kind of scary for me at first, and my wife is a graphic designer, and she would hear the word database, and she's like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to design. Well, in Webflow, we call it a collection, right? A collection of data. Same thing, but much easier. And you can make this collection of data using Webflow all visually, all right? So let me share my screen. And here we go. All right, so uh, we're not going to be focusing on Webflow interactions or Webflow uh, how to make layouts. We're just going to be focusing on Webflow CMS collections, dynamic data, and the CMS editor, all right? So the first thing, a collection. So Right here, this left side right here, we have CMS. And actually, let me make my mouse bigger, my mouse pointer bigger so we can all see together. Uh, under accessibility, hold on, please. Uh, pointer, here we go. And nope, if I can't find it real quick, then we're just gonna keep going. And I can't find it. Oh, darn. I can look it up meanwhile, Nelson. Yeah, OK. So let's keep going. So I have here, if you can see my mouse, I can. I have here uh, a CMS collection tab open. And then right here is a blue button that says Create New Collection. So if we click that, we are now shown the collection manager. All right, so let's pretend we're creating a blog post collection. We're no longer going to say database. We're going to call it collection. All right. So we're going to call this blog posts. All right. And now we have collection fields. Okay. And so the name of the, uh, the collection fields that we already have is the name and the slug. So the name is obviously the, the name of the blog post and the slug is the URL. So we already have those two. We don't have to add them again. So let's go ahead and add another custom field. OK, so what is a custom field? A custom field is just like what we were doing with the Mad Libs, OK? So we're going to go back here, and we have a custom field for adjective. We have one for noun. We have one for adjective. So it's just like creating a table, all right? So if you're familiar with uh, spreadsheets, then this is what we're doing. We're, we're adding the first row, and we're calling each column in that spreadsheet something. So the first column we have is name. The second column is slug, which is the URL to the actual blog post. All right. So let, let's build a collection together. All right. So anyone in chat, uh, what else do blog posts usually have? Okay. So I'll take the first uh, images. Okay. So yeah, we'll put an image. So if I click image, we can call this the, the main image of the blog post. Cool, cool. Save field. Cool. We've already did the third column of our spreadsheet. What else do we have? We have an author. Okay, so I'm going to use plain text for my author. Okay, I see. I see Caitlin is saying rich text. So yeah, rich text is really good for blog posts because rich text, you can add images, YouTube videos, you can bold text, you can do block quotes and stuff like that. But this is the full article. All right, let's add one more thing. Um, date and time. So what's really cool with Webflow is the date and time stamp of when you've created the post and when you publish the post or when you last modified the post is already added to your uh, collection structure. So you don't have to add that. All right. Um, Let's get one more uh, video. Sure. OK, secondary image. OK, yeah. Um, let's do a video. All right, so we have a video link. And video link is cool because you can just put a Vimeo or a YouTube link uh, into your collection. And then the embed code is already added for you. You just got to put the link, and you're good to go. So we'll just call this one video. Cool. So let's pretend that this is what we want for a collection. 
if I create collection, if you've never created a database before or collection, congratulations, you've just done it. And if you want to put in your CV or your resume that you're a database architect, well, there you go. Visual proof that you know how to do it. All right. Now, Nelson, let... if you want to add more to your CV, we can make the mouse bigger now if you want. Mm. Accessibility Dude. expert. I'm going to add that. All right. So, so go to system preferences. Yep. Accessibility. Uh -huh. And then under display. Oh, display. There it is. Display pointer and you find the pointer. Yeah. Why would it be un under mouse? Well, it's on the display, right? Is it everything? <laughs> True. Anyways, that's and my help. Thank here. you. Thank you. All right. Is my mouse bigger? Oh, my mouse is only bigger on my side, not on. Ah, uh, the... yeah. It's yeah. It's not bigger. It's the same. Good effort. Yes, but thank you for looking that up for me. All right. Go back here to normal. All right. So we're back here, and now the cool thing about Webflow is that we don't. The 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 tool doesn't stop you saying, okay, hold on, you have to wait for all of your data before you can move on with the design. No, you can go ahead and create 20, uh, up to 20 sample items. So I'm going to click that, 20 sample items. And there we go. We have all of these pre-made blog posts. So we can go to the history of web design. We have our name here. We have our slug. And then our custom fields, our main image, our author. Well, that's a long author name. Um, and then our actual article right here, and then a video, all right? So yeah, and each of these are different. There we go, yeah. Cool, so we've created a collection of data. That easy. Now, that's the same thing again as us collecting data for our story. OK, so we have this data. Now it's time to bind that data into our web page. So just like we did with Medlibs, we we're taking the words and sticking them into the story. Now, on this very, very basic page, I have a nav bar. I have a hero row. And we're going to focus on this part right here, the blog posts. And notice how I have a card right here. And what I want to do is I want this card to be reused over and over again for all of my blog posts, right? But instead of copying and pasting this card and binding each element, I want, for example, I want this image to pull from the collection. I want this title to pull from the collection. Rather than having to do that manually one blog post at a time, you can do that in Webflow using a thing called collection lists. And Webflow automatically does those manual steps for you. So let me show you. All right. So I'm going to my Add Elements panel here, scroll down to CMS, and we have, oops, we have collection lists right here. So I'm going to drag this collection list right here into my container. And now Webflow is asking, where do you want to pull the data from? Okay, so I'm going to tell it, hey, I want to pull from blog posts. That's the new collection I created. So I'm going to click on that, and there we go. So all of our blog posts are now shown here. So if I preview it, nothing happens. We have nothing. Nothing shows because we put nothing inside of these. All right, so this is, if you're familiar with, say, WordPress, and you've ever, if you've, connected uh if you connected a database like my php into the while loop of wordpress this is basically the same thing if you don't know what that is totally fine totally fine but let's go ahead and start putting things into our collection item so i'm going to take this card right here this team block right here i'm going to copy it i'm just going to call it blog post card there we go much better blog post card and, so, and now, if I put this blog post card into one of these items, watch what happens. And I'm using the wrong shortcut. Hold on. There we go. OK, so I pasted it in there, copy, paste. And look, I have 20 cards. OK? But all the cards look the same. 
So let's go ahead and bind the data into each element, okay? And I only have to do it once per element, not 20 times per element, right? So check this out. I'm going to click on the mini uh, settings cog here, and then I'm going to click get image, and then main image. So this is what I'm doing. I'm saying, hey, pull this image from the blog post collection that we created, and I want to bind it to the main image. So if I click on this, there we go. We have a different image per blog post. And we only had to do that once. Let's do it again with the title. So I'm going to click on title, mini, and now again, I want to pull the text from blog posts. And which text do I want to pull? I want to pull the name. And there we go. If we scroll down, we have different blog titles, blog names for each blog card. Let's go even further. Let's, let's finish up this card. The summary. Uh, oh, we didn't put any summary text, so let's just put the author. So I'm going to pull author, and there we go. That's a very long name. Um, I only know in Philippines you can have like up to, to five or six names. I think my mom has five names in her full name, but this one's really long. But yeah, as you can see, all of them are different. And lastly, this link right here. So we have a text link. And we can click on that cog again. And we can say, hey, I want this to go to its own blog post page. So when I click on this, I get to read the actual, the whole article. All right. So again, it's just like Mad Libs. You're, you're taking the data and then sticking it into the story. And now let's finish this off with a better uh, grid. So I'm going to call this grid and set it to grid and there we go so what i did i know i went really fast but i've already pre-styled this style and so what i did was i've clicked on display grid and then i told it i want three columns okay so i can click here on the plus sign and say i want four columns no on five i want for some reason a great number 15 columns you can do whatever you want with your columns, but I'm going to set it down to three. And there, and, and there we go. We have some sort of blog page. Um, cool. Grimmer, uh, do we have any questions in chat? We had a question uh, about how we got the images originally. Mm -hmm. That was one question, but uh, I think I answered that in the chat. Yeah. Um, what else? So, yeah, the we can yeah, did you apply the grid after the collection? Maybe you can recap on that. Yeah, so I uh, let's redo this one. So, I'm gonna take off grid. So, when you first drag in a collection list, it goes row by row. And if you want that grid three columns, all you have to do is click on the grid item the grid display, and it starts off with two, and say, I want a third column. Click there, and there we go. You can even play with the gap. Say it's 16 pixels. We can say 32 pixels for the columns and rows, or you can play around with it here on the canvas by hold, tricking, click and dragging inside the column, or you can click and drag in, inside the rows or you can hold shift and you're affecting both. And it's not moving because life. I don't know why. It's because it's locked. Live demos. I'm holding shift and nothing's happening. Or you can do it right here manually inside of this if you want to get very granular with it. All right. And there we go. And again, if you dis if you decide to style one thing, it it styles all of them. For example, let's go ahead and 
make this border radius uh, 20. <laughs> now they all have a 20 border radius. Let's make sure that overflow hidden so the top corners of the images round out as well. And there we go. And let's go ahead and add a, a box shadow. So when someone ho hovers over one of these cards, we add a box shadow. So I'm going to add a transition. And then on hover, box shadow, let's go ahead and make the size that. Blur. Something like that. Distance. I don't know what I'm doing. What is life? There we go. Just playing around. Something like that. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted a slight blur, so on hover. So if I click out and I preview, you see that shadow effect. All right, and I only had to do it once and it happens on all of the cards. Okay. All right. Anything else, uh, Grimmer? I know I went kind of on a tangent before I move on to the next part. Three deep breaths every time Nelson says, what is life? Yeah, what is life? We're all asking that same question. All right. Um, I see one that says, could you set a feature post? Yes. Uh, can you set a feature post to be most recent entry? Yeah. That's a great question. So um, there are filter uh uh, Nelson, we have a question here. Oh, go ahead. So the collection list was, uh, I'm trying to follow the chat here. The collection, collection list was created after you added the collection. Uh, what was the shortcut to merge the card and the database? Yeah, I can do this over again. So let me, let me hide this. I'm going to create a class called hide so we don't lose it. And then I display hide. Let's go ahead and do it again. I'm going to click inside of my container. Command E to pull up quick find. It's kind of like Apple Spotlight. And I'm going to type in collection. Press return. And there we go. Rather than clicking and dragging, I can use quick find to quickly find and add elements to my page. All right. So with once I do that, I can pull data from blog posts. All right. And so again, because we put nothing inside of our collection items, and I preview it, nothing shows up. However, if I want to add something here, I can. So let me quickly, let me quickly just do the image. I'm going to Command E, type an image, and there we go. So this image right here, I'm going to pull from the blog post collection and bind it to the main image. And there we go. So now we have all 20 different images showing up, all right? And you just rinse and repeat for each uh, for each element. And that's what we did for, for this. We told, we told it, hey, we want to pull from the main image for this image. We want to pull this text from name. We want to pull this text from author. And we want to pull this link to go, we want this link to go to the blog post page. All right, cool. Now that one question of how do you make one that's featured? Great question. Let's go back to our collection list. Or I got collection. another one question after that, oh, Nelson. I got another question after that, just reminding you. Okay, right, cool. So if I go back to my structure, we can edit the structure at any time. Even if the pay, even if the whole website is live, we can change things around in the collection. All right. So say your client's like, hey, we need to add another collection field. Sure, no problem. We can do that. So here we go. I'm going to click, uh, click add field. And my client, um, who asked that? Uh, I think here. Let's see. Okay, Fergie, my client is saying. I want to make one of my posts 
set to featured. So I have a switch. So a switch field. And I'm going to call this, is this featured? Yep. So if yes, turn that switch on. So I'm going to save collection and I'm going to pick this one. The worst advice we've ever heard about web design. And if I can translate it, then I would know what that advice is. But for now, we're going to keep going. And this switch right here, the new switch, is this featured? It is. So I'm going to tick that, turn that on, click Save, and leave my collection. So we've added a new collection field. So again, that's just another column in our spreadsheet. And let's go ahead and add another collection list. So collection list on top of the other one. And again, it's going to pull from blog posts. And we have all of our blog posts here. But here's, here's the trick. I'm going to go here to my settings for my collection list. And right here, we have filters. If I add a filter and say, and pull from, is this featured? I'm going to have, is this featured? Is it on? Is this switch on? Then show it. So I added it to my filters. Now look, we only have one blog post item. Let's go ahead and copy. I'm going to copy this blog post card element, paste it into here. And there we go. This is our featured one. It gets the biggest feature. And let's call this, we call this featured. And just change the design around a bit. Those two columns. There we go. Two columns, one row. And let's make sure that this one is away from the other one. There we go. And cool. Not the best design, but like it works. But there we go. So this one has our featured one. But however, this, I want to make sure that none of these are featured. So we just do the opposite. So I'm going to go here, filters. Is this featured set to on? No, I want it to be, is this feature set to off? So I shouldn't see, I shouldn't see this blog post, the worst design. And yeah, it's not here. I got one question. Is it possible to have uh, or see the most recent one? Yeah. The most recent one, again, you, you can play around with these filters, and this one will say, uh, this one we have sort order. So we can sort it by published on, or let's say created on, and say newest to oldest. And there we go. So um, since we've created all of these all at the same time, I mean, the, the order doesn't change visually, but you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, so. These questions, really, really awesome to hear from you all because this is the same thing as creating what um, programmers call um, uh, uh, SQL queries. I remember doing that back in the day with Microsoft Access Pages, ASP, and writing out this exact stuff like pull from table this where featured equals true and sort by created, it, it would be like a long string of code, right? And then if you miss one little character, it wouldn't show up and you're like, oh, but now you're doing it visually. So these are great questions and you're thinking, you're already thinking like a developer. Um, ASP.NET, yes, those were the top. Yeah, select all from blog, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. That's a nice. So one question earlier, I we might have covered it, but uh, is it how easy is it just to change the title of uh, one of the blog posts? Is like, how do you do that? Yeah. Um. Actually, let's hold on that for Ooh. the CMS editor. Ooh, okay. Okay. Portion. I don't want to so spoil we'll, anything. We'll, okay. Yeah, we'll hold that for the end. Cool. Yeah. Another great one. Can we add SEO? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And um. Let, let me show you that real quick. And then after that question, let's get on to building a blog post page. Because this is just our blog post list. Because if I click on this read on, nothing shows up. Why? 
because we didn't we didn't make it. So we need to make it. So let's go to SEO. Very important. So um, let's say you wanted a a SEO description. You can click on this, select field type, click on plain text, and we'll call this SEO description. And we'll use multi-line for that and save field, save collection. Cool. All right. And let's go ahead and add some text for, um, I need a SEO description, Grimmer. If you can get me one that's like, about Lonely Planet. Lonely this planet. is the Lonely, lonely planet, planet that will teach you everything about getting out immediately. You need to type faster, Nelson. Yeah, I, I, I'm not as fast as McGuire. I tried to do that. You know what, Nelson, don't do bits that you don't normally do. Got it. Uh, Lesson learned. All right. So you can add a separate field just for SEO description. And uh, we'll get into how to bind that later. So there's a little preview. You would add a, a new field. Again, another column in your spreadsheet for some data. And then you'll bind that to your SEO. All right. So SEO, changing text and all that stuff, that's going to be on the third part. Let's go on to the second part of our, um, uh, of our workshop. Let's create the blog post page. So uh, if I... Do that again, I'm gonna click on read on. Cool, we're on the blog post page. How do I know? It's because it says we're on the blog post template. Now again, Mad Libs, this is the same thing. We're on the story page, right? Now that we're on the story page, let's go ahead and build out our story. So if I get out of preview mode, let's quickly add some, some elements, all right? So in Webflow, you do have pre-made uh, libraries of layouts. And so I'm going to drag in, say, nav bar. Let's go ahead and add a hero where the hero heading is center. Let's hero stack. What's this look like? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. We don't need a button. We can leave that there. OK, cool. So we have that and that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and copy and paste this. So now we have two, but uh, instead of that, we can go ahead and delete that, delete that. Actually, yeah, delete everything. It's just inside of here is going to be our actual article, All right? Um, yeah, so now that we've built our story page or our blog post template page, we just do the same thing that we did on the home page, which is bind the data into, uh, into each element. Now, I don't have to drag in a collection list because I'm already inside of each collection item. So let me give you an example. Let's go ahead and bind this in here, uh, bind the H1 to the name of the article. We'll bind this to the name of the author. And we'll bind this to the image. There we go. Now, if I click here in these this items uh, drop down I can see what each page looks like so we've made the template and all the data is just being pulled into each of those items that I told webflow to bind it to and so there you go all right lastly we need our article so in here in this container I'm going to type in uh, command E and type in rich text. And I'm going to pull that information from article. Ooh, I don't want any for everything centered. Can I left align? There we go. So I left aligned everything. All right. And there we go. So now if I go back to my home page, preview, and then click on a Random, let's click on a random blog post. Click on read on five great web design sources. Read on. There we go. Five great web design resources. There's our image. There's our article. There we go. Oh, wait. Someone also added video to the to the, the database. Or sorry, ooh, I said database. Collection. <laughs> so what I can do is easily command E, type in video. And now again, 
Webflow is asking, okay, where's the video? I can manually put in the URL or I can say, hey, pull that data from blog post and bind it to video. And let's move it away from the top, from the bottom, I mean, of the article. And there we go. So if I preview, there's that video. Preview here, you have a different video. And there we go. We're just creating that template. All right. Um, yeah, so I know I went pretty, pretty quickly, but uh, hopefully the whole Mad Libs analogy helps. Um, yeah, ready for more questions before we go on to our third part. Nelson, maybe it would be helpful to recap real quick kind of the steps uh, to get here. Would that be helpful? Yeah, I can do it all over again. That's totally fine. All right, so we're back here on a blog post template page, blank site. Say I wanna add a, a nav bar, I can type, can press command E, type in nav bar, you can choose one. I'm gonna choose this third one. There we go. Now back on the body to, uh, element, I'm gonna type in hero and it's, let's do hero heading left. There we go. We'll do something like that this time and Lastly, let's go ahead and do, hold on. Okay, this already has container. Yeah, I'll use this. So I'm going to copy command C, command V to copy paste. And all I want here is, yeah, all I want here is the container. Okay, cool. All right, so now that we have our elements that we need, we just need to click on each element click on the mini settings cog and bind that data to each of our columns, uh, each of our fields inside of the seam inside of the collection. So this one is from author. This one is being pulled from main image. And lastly, inside of this container, I'm going to add in a rich text. And this one's going to be pulled from article. And if I want to add the videos, pull in video, push that away from the bottom. And there we go. We've created a blog post page. All right. Yes. Cool. Um, nice. Thank you, Nelson, for doing that again. That was helpful. You're welcome. All right. Um, let's go the next five minutes, the last part, and then we'll have 10 minutes for more questions. Okay, so the question is, can we change text? Can we add SEO? What does it look like for uh, a content editor or even my client who wants to maintain the content for this. So let's click on publish. And there we go. So here's how to change. Here's the way as a designer inside of Webflow would change the blog post titles. So you would go to collections manager, which is this three stacked of disks or ovals, and then click on one of them and we'll say, is Dreamer for the light or dark side? Your wait, what's a what's a, a clickbaity? This answer will surprise you. So I can copy that and paste it into the slug, and then there we go. So now we have a different name, different slug. We can change this to. Um, the author is McGuire, and we can just add more things. Um, let's see here. Let me see. ADP list YouTube. Let me get a little meta right here. Okay, so I'm gonna. So what I can do is just copy the YouTube link for this stream, and press the plus sign, and press the video, paste in the video. And Webflow will go ahead and add the YouTube embed 
code for for the YouTube video. I click save and there we go. So I've just created, uh, I've just edited that blog post. So if I go um, here is grammar for the light or dark side. So I've already changed that information. I've added a new a video and there we go. So that's how, um, yeah, so that's how you can edit. And this content. only changed on one of the pages. Oh, and yes. We, and we still keep it because this is okay, cool. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. So that only changes on that one CMS item. If I go back to the Grimmer post, there we go. There we go. All right. So that's one way to change the uh, content. Now let's see what it looks like for a content editor or even a client. So if I go here, make this bigger. There we go. Um, let's go to, so this is what it looks like. So if you're familiar with say uh, a different platform like WordPress, usually you would have to log in to a admin uh, dashboard and then you would have to find your way to posts and then you have to find your post and then edit it. Well, in Webflow, we're actually logged in to the CMS editor right now. The only difference between our live site and being logged in is this bottom toolbar, right? This bottom toolbar indicates that we are logged in and we can make changes. And what type of changes can you make? Well, content ones. For example, if I wanted to change, say, the home page, um, the, the home page title, I can just click inside of here and say. Hello, ADP list, All right? And click outside of that text block, and there we go. So I have two unpublished changes. I can go ahead and press publish, publish, and it's live. And you can see it live right here. So if I copy this, paste it into the chat, there we go. It's live. You know, if I change something here and say, learning Webflow is fun. Click outside, publish, publish, and it's live. All right. Um, yeah, and then you can also change images. But now you wanted to know, how do I change a text for a blog post? So where's the grammar one? So the grammar one's right here. Let's go ahead and say, I want to change the title of this blog post. I don't have to go into the collections. I don't have to go into a separate uh dashboard, I can just click inside of here and say, I want to change this title to something better, period. Click outside, publish, and there we go. I've changed it here. And I don't have to do anything else, all right? If I want to change it somewhere else, if I want to get more granular with it, I can look at the collections by clicking on collections down here, and now, we can see our collections. Click on blog post and click on, these are all of our blog posts right here. And I can click on one of them and start changing anything I need to change. Copy this, paste it into the slug and publish. So this is what your content editors or CM uh, or uh, clients would do. And the awesome thing about this is that they're not changing any fonts. They're not changing any colors. They're not changing any styles around the whole site. They're just changing content. So that way, you know, they don't break anything of your beautiful design. All right. So um, that's a little bit about changing titles. Now, someone also asked about SEO. Let's get into that. Uh, actually, should I? Okay. Yeah, let's get into that. I'm gonna to go to pages right here. And so all of these blog post pages needs different SEO. So I'm gonna hover over one of them, click on settings. And if I go down to settings, I can have a title tag. So right now the search result shows nothing, but say I wanted to show the name of the blog post. I can click on add field here, click on name, and this is what it'll look like, say, on Google or other search engines. It'll look like this. So I'm previewing what the search result will look like. But let's 
let's have dynamic and then let's static text. So my blog post website. All right. So this is what it'll look like. We have dynamic and then we have static text. All right. Now for that meta description, we've added that new field just for the description. And so we can go and add that dynamically here. So there we go. About Lonely Planet is here, but the other ones, I didn't add one. So it's just going to say meta description as a placeholder. But there we go. All right. Um, yeah. And then for our open graph, we can set that the same as SEO title, set uh, SEO meta description the same. And then we can pull the open graph image from the main image. So this is what it's gonna look like for Open Graph. If you're not familiar with Open Graph, it's basically when you share a link on social media, like Facebook, Twitter, inside of Slack, Discord, and, and um, other tools like that, uh, you'll notice that a ima an image, a title, and a description shows up with that link as our little preview. This is where you can set that, all right? And that's SEO and changing stuff using the CMS editor. Cool. And we have eight minutes for questions. I really like the tagging, how you can just bring in the SEO into the, by clicking a little icon and just getting it in there. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks for showing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Look for questions. How do we get to the CMS editor again? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to designer. And inside of designer, there's on the top left corner, there's a Webflow logo. You can click on editor and you can get there. Alternatively, if your client wants access, you can send, um, you can invite them as a collaborator. And you can search that on Webflow University, but they would just go to the, whatever the URL is, and all I, they would have to do is add a question mark, edit, to access the CMS editor. So question mark edit to the end of their URL to to access the editor. So yeah. Nelson, I got a question for you from the yeah. chat. Uh, what can you tell us about what the Webflow team is working on? Are there any top secret things being built? And does Webflow even have big things planned for the future? What's going on? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to disclose everything right now in our world map. It's really cool because we are working on some big things. Like that whenever the... the Wait, Nelson, you're cutting out. I really want to hear what you said. But like... What do you mean? Like, I'm just disclosing everything. Like, aren't you excited about this? I mean, the big, the biggest feature that's about really soon is that feature called, because I, like, can you imagine what people can, like, right? Like, it, and it's coming out, it, it, it's like coming, probably like, yeah, so, God. Like, yeah, yeah, so that's I, what I, I honestly yeah. need to check your internet. I couldn't hear, like, I only heard, like, the parts that I didn't want to hear. I just... I've never seen the chat. Like no. That. Okay, Nelson, we can take it offline, but thanks for trying to explain. Uh... Okay. Well, I mean... Oh, okay, well... You'll, 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 you'll see it when you see it, I mean... You know, and once we announce it, you're just like, oh my gosh, now I understand why Nelson was so excited. I mean, yeah. Um, okay. We felt the passion. I'm glad. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little bit of web, about Webflow CMS collections. And again, to summarize, what we've learned is in the Webflow collections, you can create your own custom collection of data, aka database, and you can add all these wonderful fields. Please go to university.webflow.com to learn about each of these fields. Each has their own superpower, and you're just being like a database architect, and it's really, really fun to create. And after you're done creating your collection, we've created a list of blog posts where we're just putting data 
and binding that to each element. And then lastly, we talked about the template where we, again, we bound the element to the data from our collection and that's how you make a blog post page. And this goes way beyond just blog posts. This is the foundation for blog posts, for e-commerce um, pages, for um, community websites. Um, yeah, you can you can go far with this uh, foundation, but yeah, that's what we learned. Oh, and the CMS editor, the power of keeping content and design separate. So content editors can do their thing and designers like us can do ours without getting in the way of each other. Nelson, when is your next live stream? Just want to make sure people know that you're uh, coming up soon. The, my next live stream is not this Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. But this Wednesday, if you sign up or if you subscribe to youtube.com slash webflow, my friend, a uh, wonderful, wonderful, um, a uh, wonderful person here, Aaron, he's going to teach you how to uh, connect Webflow to other platforms. Like, um, I, I think, I think Air, he loves Airtable. So maybe it's Airtable this week, but um, check it out. There's so much, uh, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much other things that Webflow can do uh, beyond just design and beyond CMS. Uh, MailChimp, Airtable, and HubSpot. Thank you, Emily. Mm -hmm. Not here. Um. Oh, hi, Penny. <laughs> Penny's here. Hey. Um. Is there any quite? Is there questions? Uh. Is there any questions that stand out uh, to you? The blog grid you created is it responsive from Raymond? Yes, it is. Nelson, there's a lot of lot of questions. We're taking notes, and we'll try to get back to uh, those uh, questions with answers as soon as we can. But yeah, there's okay. a there's a lot going on. So this last question right here is it responsive? We can make it responsive right now. It's three columns. Um, this doesn't look good for that. So let's go to the columns uh, yeah, the grid. Remove one column. Now it's two. Let me go here. We can set it to one column and now it's fully responsive. So we go here and then here. And there we go. But yeah, responsiveness. You just covered responsiveness in 30 seconds, Nelson. <laughs> sort <Wow>. of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. All right, well, thank you everyone who's watched and who's on YouTube, who's here in um, AirMeet, but it was nice to meet you all. And thank you for your questions. Thanks for watching. Again, all this information, university.webflow.com. And you can catch me and Aaron live streaming every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, youtube.com slash webflow. And on to you, Gosh. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Nelson and Grimmer, for today's session. I would say it was a very, very important one and immense value as well. And not to forget Maguire and Emily for being throughout the session and helping learn in the live Q&A. Really grateful to have all of you here. So we'll be moving on to the phase two of the series now. And we'll be starting up with live case studies starting Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And these will be portfolio design, Figma to Webflow and Webflow e-commerce. The series case assignments also would be going out live today. And so everyone is requested to keep a look in their inboxes later today. You can pick any one out of these three cases and submit it before the deadline to be eligible to be featured in the demo day. The demo day is planned to, ha uh, to be happening on 17th of Feb. And anyone who completes the assignment would also be eligible for the graduation certificate, something that we have been constantly being asked for a lot of times in the uh, Q&A. And don't forget to post your learnings in the socials using Webflow with ADP list and do network around with the fellow learners in the lawns. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good one. See you on Wednesday.